Hey, what's up everyone? Today we're going to be taking a look at Faraday Future Stock. Obviously huge news that they're getting a bunch of money and going public. But we'll be especially looking at where this company stands in the huge bath of EV companies right now and what the stock could look like in the future. Also, consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already, if you enjoy videos like this. So first of all, let's quickly review the details of the merger that is taking Faraday Future public. So the SPAC itself is Property Solutions Acquisition Corp, ticker PSAC. Pretty surprising since the SPAC, like the name sounds, was targeting a real estate focused company. But regardless, the merger is going to result in billion dollars of proceeds going to Faraday Future with $230 million from PSAC's trust, and then that means the rest is covered from a $775 million pipe from other investors. So pretty huge pipe. This is imputing an equity post-merger value of $3.4 billion and is going to end up with Faraday trading as FFIE by the end of Q2 2021. Another interesting fact is that all Faraday shareholders are rolling their equity. And the biggest and most important thing is that this is going to allow the company to fund the production of their long-anticipated FF91 SUV. So that's definitely a positive. But one thing to definitely be aware of is the ownership breakdown post-merger. Faraday Future had a good deal of debt, which we will see that turn into 17.2% of equity for those they owed it to. Pipe shareholders will get 23%. Current Faraday shareholders will retain 51.1%. And finally, SPAC shareholders will hold only around 6 6.8%. So be aware that buying PSEE stock, there's a decent amount of dilution. So look, if you weren't aware before, Faraday Future has a very troubled past, which I discussed quite a bit in my last video, which is linked in the description. But I also think it's important to be able to recognize that a company can emerge from really difficult times and perhaps be even stronger for it. And this SPAC deal, I believe, gives them an enormous chance to do something great. And their main vehicle they want to get onto the roads, the Faraday Future 9-1, it actually has been extremely impressive from the specs that they claim. The two main stats that stick out are the 0-60 to in 2.4 seconds and the 1,050 horsepower. And they also say the car gets 378 miles of range. Inside the car, there are 11 displays, so certainly an advanced car. They also have received a surprisingly large amount of more than 14,000 reservations for the car. And on their investor presentation, another very interesting stat is that the 9-1 recorded a faster time at Pikes Peak than the previous record for EVs set by the Tesla Model S. So there's definitely something there to what they say. And you can see some comparisons to other EVs. And the car has a much better 0-60 to 60 than other similar cars and also has the highest horsepower out of the vehicles that they listed here in selective listing. And the range is not bad, right up there with Tesla. And the charging time is fairly low compared to peers. And you can also see they have a plan for each vehicle they develop to have a supreme version, if you will, called the Futurist version, and then just the standard model. So the Faraday Future 9-1, they want to have the Futurist model out by Q1 of 2022 and the standard model out by Q4 of that year. The Futurist model will cost $180,000, so quite a bit, and then the standard model will be just $100,000, <laughs> just $100,000. The Faraday Future 8-1 will be coming out next which is designed to be a little smaller and also more affordable and more designed for mass market vehicles the futurist version will start at 95k and is planned to come out q3 of 2023 and the generic they were released at the same time for a much cheaper 59,000. Then the Faraday Future 7-1, which is intended to truly be a mass market vehicle, they will start the Futurist model at 65,000, and then they will start the standard model at 45,000. So as far as the 9-1 goes, it's clear they're appealing to the extremely elite and wealthy market. They certainly aren't targeting the average person with a car that will probably end up costing $200,000. But they can, if they can make it at 20. 2023, their more mass market cars would definitely be more affordable for the average consumer. And these cars, they believe they can efficiently develop using their proprietary variable platform architecture, which allows for a lot of carryover and ability to scale up and their propulsion technology, which they can, of course, apply to other vehicles. And finally, their software and autonomous technology, which they have developed in house. And they also have a manufacturing facility they are developing in Hanford, California, which needs around $90 million to facilitate the startup production, which should be within nine months of the money coming through from the SPAC deal. They expect to build 10,000 vehicles per year there. 
and it seems their future plans are to expand to a plant in Korea where they could get to over a quarter million cars per year. Now talking about the revenue for a second, they have a huge growth prediction from 504 million in 2022 to 4 billion in 23, and then 10.5 billion in 24, and 21 and a half billion in 2025. To me, these seem like really ambitious numbers because they're going to need a lot of people to buy that 91 car. So, and that's a pretty expensive car. But also to address how competitive the EV market is getting, there's something to be said about attacking the ultra high end market. And with their zero to 60 speed and horsepower and technology they have, there's definitely something there. But the real question will be if someone is willing to dish out an extra 100,000 for that. Lucid Motors is targeting that luxury, high-performance market, but obviously don't have an SUV coming out soon, so that's definitely something to know. But even Lucid, I doubt, would be planning to sell a car for that amount. And of course, all the massive high-end performance brands like Lamborghini or Porsche or Ferrari, Audi, etc., these companies are all working on their own electric vehicles in line with the shift we are seeing. Yes, all the new companies like Neo, Tesla, Fisker, Lordstown, Rivian, Lucid, Byton, etc., will have their chance to get into the market. But also, I think people are overlooking how much influence the already established brands will have just switching over to EVs. So I think that PSAC stock, which has gone up almost 100% from the NAV, should be traded very carefully. There's definitely a lot of risk and a lot of time before the 9-1 will be on the road. If you truly believe they won't have any major issues producing the car and that people are willing to pay that amount, then this may be the right investment for you. But I would encourage you to do your own research. With that said, thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed, consider liking this video and subscribing to the channel. And I hope to catch you next time.